Yes, I arrived uh, middle of July. Um, it seems like uh, it seems like only yesterday, but uh, amazingly, six months already flown by. And I remember uh, on arrival talking about uh, the, the the challenges that we might have in the in the coming um, six months, but as it was back then uh, in July, with the potential for uh, a second wave of COVID and the uh, the, the the move towards um, the the uh, the end of the a transition period for the, the UK's departure from the EU. Um, and I think uh, it's worth to say that, yeah, that's been a, a particularly busy uh, six months um, so far. And, and we've seen uh, both of those areas develop uh, as, we've, uh, as we've gone through. Uh, British Forces Gibraltar has been quite uh, actively involved in the delivery of the vaccine to the ROC. Uh, so tell us uh, a, a bit about your involvement in that operation. Well, let me start by saying that uh, the arrival of the vaccines and the, uh, the, 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 the process that's gone behind that was, was a real team effort, uh, not just from uh, the Ministry of Defence and British Forces Gibraltar, but also the FCDO uh, and the, uh, the government of Gibraltar. And, and it's been really encouraging for me and really nice to see uh, everybody focused on, on doing the right thing and getting the vaccines here as, uh, as quickly as possible. And it's you know, last week's um, arrival on, on Saturday uh, marked the end of a good deal of, of work and, and everything at one point seemed to be conspiring against us. And uh, many of you will have uh, experienced the, the, the pretty uh, awful weather conditions at the end of, of last week. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, through a combination of, uh, of guile efforts and, and, uh, and resilience, uh, the, uh, the RAF uh, aeroplane uh, arrived as planned on Saturday evening. Uh, and the Royal Gibraltar Regiment were then able to move the, the, the vaccines from the airfield uh, up to the hospital uh, to allow us to commence our, um, our vaccination programme here in, in Gibraltar. And of course, the MOD has been very actively involved with Gibraltar's response to the virus. So uh, do you expect that cooperation to continue in the future? Absolutely. And, and, and as I said, you know, this is a real team effort. We're all in this together. So, so uh, opportunities that we've, we've had to, to assist the, the, uh, the government of Gibraltar in, uh, in defeating this, this scourge that's affected all of our lives over the last, uh, the last 12 months, uh, we, uh, we, we are taking it. And certainly earlier on in the year, uh, we had um, a number of uh, opportunities to assist from uh, using Royal Gibraltar Regiment's uh, soldiers to uh, to help with the setting up of the Nightingale Hospital uh, down at Europa, uh, through to uh, my medical teams here providing some some medical uh, advisory uh, uh, support to to the GHA. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward. Anything that we can and uh, are able to to do to assist uh, will be uh, will we'll be will be doing all that we can because this is all of us in this together. We hear about workplaces all over the rock being affected by uh, isolation, uh, employees perhaps themselves uh, falling victim of uh, COVID-19. So how has the MOD in Gibraltar been impacted and, and as a result its uh, operational capacity? Well, you know, COVID is, is, uh, has, has no respect for, uh, for, for, for the fact that we're, we're in uniform um, here. So, so we've equally been impacted by uh, numbers of, uh, of our people being in, uh, in isolation and, and having tested positive. But what we have done is uh, very early on in the, in the pandemic, we uh, identified the critical teams that deliver the critical outputs uh, in, uh, in British Forces Gibraltar and made them uh, resilient by uh, splitting the workforce out, making sure that um, uh, areas were, were clean before handover. Uh, and so things like the, the Gibraltar squadron, the air traffic control over the airfield, those key enablers, those key uh, missions that we do have been able to continue throughout the pandemic without breaking step. Well, on to other matters, of course, that agreement signed on New Year's Eve for uh, a future framework to discuss uh, a relationship between Gibraltar and the European Union. What does this do for the stability and security of the naval base in Gibraltar? Well, the actual uh, details, the uh, in-principle agreement, of course, are, are, are very much uh, in the political space rather than uh, for, for me to, uh, to deal with. But 
but but actually for, for, for me and my daily outputs um uh my mission remains the same that's to, to demonstrate uh, uk sovereignty uh, of gibraltar through uh, a combination of, of of presence and posture um and, and the new uh, uh regime the new the, the new environment that we find ourselves in uh, really hasn't uh, hasn't dramatically altered the way that, that i go about doing my business here on a daily basis we still have uh, Royal Naval Gibraltar Squadron ships uh, out patrolling sovereignty, uh, the, the sovereign territory uh, in, in British Gibraltar and territorial waters. Um, they uh, they uh, do what is required in, in terms of uh, challenging any unlawful incursions that happen in the uh, in the territorial waters. Um, and, and pretty much, I think, uh, if you're asking on a wider scale, I, I, I see the UK with its uh, much more global outlook and the the, the global Britain uh, response that we're seeing, um, meaning that actually I think uh, British forces Gibraltar might find ourselves quite busy uh, in the near future. Uh, and just in the last few months, we've already seen uh, I think an uptick both in in um, uh, naval traffic into the into the dockyard and indeed uh, air traffic at the airfield. Now, some recent uh, upgrades for Gibraltar Squadron, but of course we are expecting those new builds, those new vessels to come to Gibraltar sometime soon. Can you give us an update? Yeah, um, uh, uh, HMS uh, Scimitar and HMS Sabre, uh, uh, of course, had, had done uh, quite a number of years here in, in Gibraltar, and they've been great servants uh, to, to, to the mission here. Uh, but they were becoming quite aged and probably in need of, uh, of replacements. Uh, and the, the UK has, uh, has undertaken to invest in a new capability. Uh, and these are two purpose-built uh, patrol boats that are currently in the process of being built uh, in my hometown up in, uh, up in Liverpool. Um, and these are uh, modern, uh, well-equipped, uh, well-engineered uh, patrol boats. We're expecting the first one to arrive around about the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year, with the with the, the second one uh, following shortly afterwards, um, and that's really exciting. I, I think this will provide a, a really uh, impressive capability and a real impressive uh, uptick on, on the capability that we had with Sabre and Scimitar. In the interim, uh, we've been uh, pleased to receive uh, HMS Dasher and HMS Pursuer, the two P two thousand patrol boats that we've got here. And whilst uh, there are some uh, differences in capability, um, actually the, the, the greater size uh, compared to Scimitar and Sabre uh, means that actually there's a much uh, greater emphasis on, on that presence and that posture. And they're able to be uh, at sea more you know, for longer periods of time uh, and in, in some, uh, some, some of the more challenging weather conditions that we see. And overall, how would you describe your first six months on the rock? Well, I, I mean, I'm six six months in here, and I, down through the through the, I'm 34 years in the Royal Navy, and I've been coming to Gibraltar uh, regularly throughout my uh, my naval career, um, and, and it's a place I think that uh, you know I have such dear uh, memories of from from being a, a young 20 year old midshipman right the way through to to, to now, and I think the thing that uh, has really impressed me most uh, in in the time that, I, that I've been here. It's just seen the way everybody has had to pull together to deal with these these real challenges, um, and certainly my my workforce here in in British Forces Gibraltar, which is made up not only of of uh, UK service men and women, but but also uh, UK civil servants and very very importantly locally employed contractors, are absolutely uh, united and pulling in the same direction to make sure that we're able to deliver our mission uh, on a daily basis and able to provide that reassurance, hopefully. Uh, to Gibraltar that uh, that, that uh, we're, we're here to, uh, to to do the right thing.